All right, so this first little lesson is going to be on the properties of gases. First, let's talk about what those basic properties are. The first property is that gases don't have a defined shape or volume, and they don't have a surface. You should remember back in elementary school that solids have um, a defined shape and they have a defined volume. The volume is how much space they take up. Liquids, oh, and, and because of that, because they have a defined shape, they have surfaces. So they have a surface on several sides. So if you look here, this, this solid object would have six surfaces. Liquids do not have a defined shape. They can take the shape of their container, but they do have a defined volume, and that's because the particles are very closely attracted to each other. And because of that, they will always have a surface on the top. It's the only place that they'll have a defined surface, but they will have one on the top. Gases, on the other hand, will take the shape of their container, so they do not have a defined shape, but they also don't have a surface. If we were to pop this top off of the flask, the gas particles would all just escape, and there would be no surface to the um, edge or to the shape of that gas. The next th property of gases is that gases are compressible. And so maybe you've done one of these two activities before. Um, this is basically a ball pump or a tire pump. And we put our finger over the end of it, and you, can, you know that you can squeeze the air into a smaller area. So originally, the air is taking up all the space, right? But then eventually, you can push this down so that it only takes up this much space at the bottom. So gases are compressible. You can do the same thing with a syringe. And no, there would not be a needle on the syringe. You would just have your finger over the end, have some air trapped inside, and you could push and compress the air. Gases can also diffuse. And by diffuse, what we mean is that gases can move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And so the most common example of this is like when you, you have this great smell. Maybe you've baked something in the oven. Maybe it's a loaf of bread or a tray of cookies. And when you first open up that oven door, all those gas particles, the odor, the things that smell good, are all really tightly concentrated right around what you made. And in the room, they're spread much further apart. And so they're highly concentrated here and they're less concentrated here. And diffuse means when these gas particles move from an area where they're concentrated to an area where they're less concentrated. And that's why you can smell those baked cookies in your family room um, without having to stand right next to the oven. Once the oven door is opened, that smell, the gas particles, diffuse through your house. And the last basic property of gases that we're going to talk about is that they can flow. And so most people understand that liquids can flow, but they don't think about gases flowing because normally we don't see gases flowing um, because most gases are invisible to the naked eye. So I found a little video for us to watch that will explain or it will show you and you can actually see gases flow. I'm not sure why that video didn't load yet. Let's try it again. Here we go. So here we go. This is an example of gases flowing. They're filling up this aquarium with a gas called sulfur hexafluoride, which is more dense than air, and so the gas is going to sit in the aquarium and not escape. And now this aluminum foil boat can be floating on that gas. But here's where you get to see it pour. They're picking up the gas and pouring it from the beaker into the boat, and you can see that gases do flow. All right, so those are the basic properties of gases, but we need to explain what causes those properties of gases. So what explains all four of those properties is this thing called the kinetic molecular theory. The word kinetic means to move. The word molecular means having to do with molecules. And if you remember from unit one in chemistry, a theory is an explana explanation.
And so instead of calling this the kinetic molecular theory, we could call it the moving molecule explanation. By the way, we oftentimes abbreviate kinetic molecular theory with KMT. All right, well, let's see what the kinetic molecular theory states. First of all, it tells us that particles are always moving. That's the biggest thing. All particles, no matter how small, are always moving. And it tells us how they're moving. They're moving constantly. That means all the time. They're moving rapidly. That means fast. And they're moving randomly. That means there's no order to it. So they don't all flow in a line. They don't all move back and forth. It's very random. And then the kinetic molecular theory tells us one more thing about gas particles. They say that gas particles, not only are they moving constantly, rapidly, and randomly, but that gas particles are also very far apart from each other and have little to no attraction. So how can this moving molecule explanation explain those four properties of gases? Well, so here's our four properties of gases. And if you remember, the first one said that there's no defined shape or volume. Well, this can be explained because if the gas particles are not attracted to each other and they're moving really fast, that would cause them to expand and fill up their container in three dimensions, not just in two dimensions like a liquid does. How does kinetic molecular theory explain the compressibility of gases? Well, this one's pretty simple. The kinetic molecular theory tells us that gas particles are far apart. If they're far apart, like so, and we apply a force to those particles, we can cause them to get closer together. So kinetic molecular theory explains compressibility by telling us that the particles are far apart. How can kinetic molecular theory explain diffusion? Well, particles can move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration if they are constantly moving and if that motion is random. If it's random, some of them will move into the lower concentrated area, and some will be moving back into the higher concentrated area. But as time goes by, they will all become equally distributed. And then lastly, how can the kinetic molecular theory explain why particles can flow? Well, if those particles are constantly moving, and they're not hindered, then that constant motion is what allows them to slip and slide past each other and to be able to be transferred from one object to another, like from the beaker to the boat in that little video we watched. I hope that explains the properties of gases. Watch our next video on gas pressure.